Hi guys, welcome to Let's, Tea, Let's Talk Tea Podcast with Shani Sam and Godfrey. I'm super excited to be here with you all as usual, and I have a big surprise with you all for you all today. We have an amazing speaker, author, doctor of psychology. She is going to be joining us today, and we are going to be talking about the imposter syndrome. And for those of you that is new to Let's Talk Tea Podcast, I am Shani Sam and Godfrey founder of Elevation TV Network, Elevation Radio Network, and The Gifted Magazine, and author of The Five Entrepreneurial Mindset. So we have an amazing episode for you all today. So I am going to bring on Dr. Yemi on, and she's going to introduce herself, and we're going to dive on in. Hi, doctor. Welcome. Hello, Shani. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It is great to have you here. Introduce yourself to the audience. Well, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emmy Estacio. I'm a chartered psychologist. I'm based here in the UK. I'm actually originally from the Philippines, um, but I moved here to do my uh, master's and postgrad um, here in the UK. But I love psychology and I love being here in the UK so much that I stayed here forever. Um, I am a number one best-selling um, author of three books, um, Change Your Life for Good, Imposter Syndrome Remedy, and Fear is Not My Enemy, all available um, on Amazon in print, Kindle, and book versions. Awesome. So, you know, tell us about your book. Before we talk about the imposter, my, um, the imposter syndrome, tell us about your book. Yes. Um, so, Imposter Syndrome Remedy actually um, shares uh, everything that I know in applied psychology um, that helps people to understand um, what imposter syndrome is, how it affects um, them in their life and in their career, and what they can do to remedy it. Um, a lot of people, um, they may experience a self-doubt and all these feelings of incompetence without really realizing that it, that it is imposter syndrome. So in the book, um, it actually talks about um, the characteristics and symptoms of imposter syndrome, you know, how to detect imposter syndrome and you know some of the um, strategies that you can use um, from applied psychology to, to overcome these feelings of doubt incompetence and inadequacy so that's actually what the book is all about awesome and it is available on Amazon guys so feel free to go and purchase your copy of the book and imposter syndrome is something that we hear a lot about it's you know, it's a lot of blog articles, a lot of different um, um, videos and such on imposter syndrome, but we really have to look at it from the clinical standpoint. Mm -hmm. We have to yes. look at it from the clinical standpoint. And when you say psychology, I'm like, yes, I knew that I am going to love her because I to have a background in psychology. Awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> <but yes. laughs> I said, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> we both have the background. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's always fantastic to, uh, to talk to a fellow psychologist because, you know, we, we understand how it works, um, you know, in terms of um, how, how we operate in our cognition and how it manifests in, in our behavior. So, yeah, we, we can talk about that today. Yes, awesome. So what is imposter syndrome? For people that heard about imposter syndrome, but they are not really sure what it is. Okay, so yes, imposter syndrome is this persistent feeling of self-doubt, incompetence, and inadequacy, despite evidence that shows otherwise. Um, imposter syndrome has nothing to do with actual fraudsters who are just faking it. Imposter syndrome, you know, uh, those who experience imposter syndrome are those people who are good at what they do. They, um, they know what they are doing. They have the skills, they have the experience, they have the qualifications. And yet they feel as if they are just faking it. They feel as if they are just winging it and they are concerned. You know, they are actually worried that people will find out that yeah. they are a fraud. You know, they have this heightened, um, fear and, and anxiety that sooner or later they're going to make a mistake or um, and eventually people will find out that they are incompetent and you know people are giving too much um, value on, mm -hmm. on what they do so yeah so you have this persistent feeling that you're not good enough um, this feeling that um, you're not fit for the job even if um, the evidence shows 
you're actually perfect for what you do. Right. You know, I'm glad you said that because in my book, I spoke about the five entrepreneurial mindset and a part of it is the sabotage and mindset. And underneath the sabotage and mindset, I spoke about imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that from an entrepreneurial standpoint, that when imposter syndrome show up, that's when a lot of entrepreneurs, they quit their business. Mm -hmm. That's when they begin to throw in the towel because like you said, the evidence show that they're doing the right things that they know what they're doing, but they really don't believe it. Yes. And it's a real shame because we're losing so much talent um, and, and so much opportunity. You know, when, when people, as you say, throw in the towel because they are thinking that they are not good enough or they are doubting their abilities when in fact they are actually good at what they do, um, it would be such a loss to just give up just because of that feeling. Um, and most of the time, these are illogical thoughts that have no real basis um, in, in the world. So it's, it's really important for people to recognize um, what are these limiting beliefs. You know, in my book, I call them inner critic messages that, that fuel these feelings of, of imposter syndrome. And, and what you can do, you know, to, to change um, that, that mindset, you know, to change these beliefs so you can pursue what you want to pursue and really feel confident at what you do right what are some tips and some tools for that entrepreneur because i know that you are a coach as well and you do coach a lot of professionals so that professional that is using their gifts and their talent that feels that they're suffering from that imposter syndrome what are some things that they can do to help yes. with that so um the first thing that i will have to say is you have to be aware of your inner critic you know all these um uh, that that voice inside your head that tells you that you're not good enough that you're not qualified enough that you are a failure you know all these um uh, limiting beliefs that you have now there are some people who might tell you to um destroy that inner critic to crush your inner critic or to banish it I would say, um, don't do that. You know, don't hurt your inner critic because whether you like it or not, your inner critic is still part of who you are. You know, it, it may be a hurtful message inside your head, but it is still your head. So what I would um, encourage your listeners to do is to actually be aware of your inner critic messages, but instead of banishing it or suppressing it or trying to crush it, what you need to do is to explore it you know, listen to it, not necessarily follow it, but you need to understand where these messages are coming from and that you need to give it a bit of TLC. Now, in my book, uh, TLC doesn't really stand for uh, tender loving care. <laughs> no, you don't, <laughs> you don't give your inner critic tender loving care. TLC is actually a, a questioning sequence that you can apply to help you to explore the inner critic message. And TLC stands for, is it true? Is it logical? Is it constructive? So you can follow this um, TLC questioning sequence to enable you to explore your inner critic messages instead of trying to suppress it. So for example, if you are telling yourself, um, I'm not qualified to do this, you have to ask, is it true? Are you sure that you're not qualified? Have you checked your resume lately? Haven't you seen all the experience and in the qualifications that you've gained through the years to make you fit and qualified for what you do? Because what you'll discover is that when you use the TLC questioning sequence, just by the first question that you ask, is it true? More often than not, you'll realize that the messages that you hold in your head are actually lies. So right. you have to ask first and foremost, is it true? Right. Yes. Right. So, so that's, that's the first question. The second question is, you also have to ask, is it logical? Um, because sometimes the inner critic might be correct. <laughs> um, that, that's why it's important that you have to, to explore it because the, the last thing that you want to, to do is to be in denial. So for example, you are telling yourself, oh, you know, I'm not good enough to do this yet. Um, you know, maybe you, you have done this before, but not enough. To, to be the expert in, in, in what you are pursuing. So a lot of entrepreneurs, for example, they may, they, they may be new in their business. You know, may, maybe they're starting a new project and they feel as if they are not good enough yet. 
um, to, to do that. So they ask the question, is it true? And sometimes the answer might be, yeah, yeah, maybe you need a little bit more practice and, and maybe it's true that you, um, you need a little bit more experience. But the second question is, is it logical? Just because you don't have enough experience yet or just because you haven't done this for a long, long time, does it mean that you shouldn't do it at all? Right. You know, so the logical thing is if you do something now and you do it over and over and over and over again with practice and with experience, you will get better at it, right? right. So, yes, you ask the first question, is it true? Sometimes it might not be true. Sometimes it might be. So move on to the next question. Ask, is it logical? Just because you aren't good at this yet doesn't mean that you'll never be good at it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like this forever. It's only going to be a matter of time and practice until you get better at it. Which leads you to the third question, is it constructive, right? So what that question um, encourages, you, encourages you to do is if you are thinking, I'm not good enough uh, at this yet, I'm not good to, you know, I don't have enough experience to do this yet, and the second question is, is it logical? Just because you're not good at this yet doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it at all. The third question is, is it constructive? What can I do to remedy it? What can I do to get better? So instead of wallowing in self-pity and you know feeling sorry for yourself that you're not good at this yet, ask the question, is it constructive? How is it helping you? And what can you do to get better? In that way, your inner critic message is actually trying to help you to grow rather than to stop you at where you are now. So that's why I, I, I would um, encourage your listeners, you know, don't treat your inner critic as if it is your enemy. Um, actually, that's, that's the title of my third book, you know, Fear is Not My Enemy. If yeah. you're having these fears or these doubts or, you know, all these inner critic messages, treat it like a friend because it is something that, that tells you, look, there is a risk involved. You have to um, be cautious, be careful, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you should stop there. You could explore, assess the risk, assess the consequences of taking action or inaction, assess your abilities, assess what you can do, and from there, make an decision on what you need to do next. Make it constructive. So the, so the thought that used to be irrational and illogical and you think that is destructive would actually work for you because it's triggering you to, to examine what uh, the risks are, to examine your abilities and to examine um, the consequences of your actions so you can make an informed decision on what you need to do next. And I think those are some great points. I think those are some great points and some great tactics to use because I do believe that a lot of times when we are suffering from imposter syndrome, like you said, it's that little voice that we listen to. And sometimes the voice is right because mm -hmm. sometimes we know within ourselves that there's more that we could be doing and we're not where we're really on the performing. And when the voice start talking to us, sometimes we do need to examine the voice and say, you know, is it true? Like you said, am I doing the best that I can do? What does my results look like? Look at ourselves on paper and see what we look like. And if it's true, then we may want to do something about it. Maybe we want to, like you said, new entrepreneurs, maybe they want to find a podcast to plug into or find a video series to watch or a mentor or a coach or something to get, get them to the point where they feel like I am the expert. What do you think about that? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, it, for, for when you have inner critic, just yes, the first question that you ask is, is it true? And well, sometimes it's true, sometimes it not, it's not, but you know, don't bury yourself in denial. There are always ways for us to grow. You don't need to be stuck um, in this belief. You can do something about it. That's basically what, what I'm um, trying to share in the book. You know, because there are some self-help um, uh, gurus that will tell you, I, ah, you know, ignore it, and you know, you, you just have to crush it and suppress it. No, you know, use the critic message for your benefit. You know, it's going to enable you to grow because it's it's prompting you to to explore um, if you have strengths, if you have limitations, and if there's any any areas for for growth and development. Right, right. Uh, you know, it's so funny that I had to deal with this. 
was it I think around a few days ago mm -hmm. with a client and she felt like I'm doing so much and I don't see any results and I got to the point here's the imposter syndrome so I got to the point where I tell the client I said you know what what I want you to do is I want you to go back and I want you to get a binder get some sheet protectors and I want you to print everything that you have done so far we are what six months we just started a six month in this year print everything every tv show you went on every radio show every magazine every podcast every article every news publication every press release print it all put it in the book and you can see what you have been working on because a lot of times we're growing but we don't necessarily see the growth absolutely and, right and that will help us believe that the little guy, the imposter syndrome, the little guy that like to whisper to us is right. So I do believe that's, you know, that's a, another tool that we can use is like smart goals, right? Measuring our goals. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, because you, you can monitor them and you can actually, you can look at evidence, you know, rather than it just floating in your mind. Um, in my book, I actually also encourage my readers to keep a catalog of wins. Mm -hmm. um, because you, 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 when you do that, you actually monitor what you've been doing and, and what, um, what you've been gaining, you know, not necessarily in, in real numbers, although you can do that as well, but how you are growing in terms of your mindset, in terms of your attitude, in terms of how you feel about what you're doing. You know, all these little wins um, you can accumulate. And when that inner comes knocking on your door, you can actually have a look at your catalog of wins and see how much you've accomplished, um, you know, in, in, in a given period of time. So, that's really important, you know, to be able to monitor your progress, to be able to monitor your wins, and also to be able to celebrate and, yes. and to acknowledge your wins. Because that's the other thing with um, people who experience imposter syndrome. Even when they are winning, even if they are getting results, because their expectations are so high that they're not able to appreciate all these little wins that they are accumulating in their journey. Right. So it's important to yes you know acknowledge all your little tiny steps because these will um, accumulate and, and lead you to to growth and be able to appreciate you know to show gratitude because you know when we express gratitude um, what we are grateful for actually magnifies so these are certain things that um uh, your, I would encourage your listeners to practice. Um, I think, and I think you would agree. You know, it's um, you know, monitoring, you know, keeping note of your of your wins and and celebrating and appreciating and showing gratitude um, for for all these accomplishments um, that that you've been gaining. Because for people who experience imposter syndrome, they tend to downplay. Um, what they've what they've achieved, they tend to not really appreciate their value and not to celebrate their successes. So it's really important to acknowledge it and, and to celebrate it if you can. Yes, I think that's a that's a great tool to add is the celebration because I think that's one of the things that we don't do enough is to celebrate our wins, especially when it comes to a digital media, digital world, is we have a lot of wins, but we don't really celebrate the wins based on what the media is saying. If we don't have the certain amount of likes or share or hashtags that we thought that we would, then we feel like I didn't really win. But the fact that sometimes we even accomplish that goal, it's a win. Yes, yes, absolutely. And to be honest, some people, you know, you may have several thousands of followers. And stuff, but, you know, sometimes you just get one feedback from one person telling you, oh, you know, your interview was amazing. Um, you wouldn't believe how much it, um, it, it helped me in, in my mindset or how much your, your teachings are, are helping me in my life. Even just that one person you know, you having an impact on, on one single person, it's, it's absolutely amazing. So it's being able to celebrate these um, wins and, and, and acknowledging um, uh, what, what we are giving, you know, the value that we are giving um, in our work. Yes, I absolutely, I absolutely believe that because that, you know what, 
it's the ones with the thousands of followers that tend to suffer from imposter syndrome because a lot of times they have thousands of followers but the numbers the engagement is not adding up and that do make them believe like okay maybe one day they're going to realize that i'm really not that good <laughs> that ah, yes. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like i probably don't know what i'm talking about like maybe one day the world's going to wake up and realize that maybe i'm not that great <laughs> yeah. well if 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 i can share another tip actually if okay. if the tlc um questioning sequence is not working well it's probably because um you are in your head too much so what what I would encourage if, if that's going on, you know, if the TLC sequence is not working out, that, that you're so stuck um, in your inner critic message is to actually engage um, with another person. As you've said, if you have a mentor or if you have a coach or even if it's just your partner or a friend, you know, share with them your inner critic messages and go through the TLC sequence with them because it might, you know, something that you hold as true might not be true for others. You know what I mean? So it actually does help um, when you talk through this with someone else because some of these inner critic messages, you've been holding on to it for so long. Maybe it's deeply rooted since you were a child. So imagine, you know, if you've been holding on to these thoughts for 20, 30, 40 years, you know, it's not going to change just like that. You know, it might take... um a little bit of um, questioning and, and challenging um, with another person, you know, to be able to make you realize that some of these messages that you're holding are untrue, illogical, and destructive. So that's actually my second tip. Um, so you can do the TLC questioning sequence yourself, but if it is not working because these are long-held, um, deep-seated beliefs, you can actually have another person who can go through the sequence with you and you may realize that there are certain things, you know, certain um, thoughts that you hold inside your head that might not necessarily have a, a, a factual or logical um, basis in, in the real world. So that's actually the second tip um, that I, I could share with, you, with your audience. Yes, I think that's an amazing tip. I think that is an amazing tip. And you said something from childhood and that had me thinking that, you know, a lot of times it comes from our habits. It's the habits of always beating ourselves down and we carry that over into our professional life, whether it be our jobs or our businesses because yes. of our habits. Absolutely. Um, and there are um, people who experience imposter syndrome who tend to have maladaptive perfectionist tendencies. Maybe when they were a child, you know, it's not good enough unless you get it perfect. You know, um, you know, you you aren't uh, celebrated for the effort, or um, you're not celebrated for doing a good job. You know, it always has to be perfect. So there are people who experience imposter syndrome who tend to have maladaptive perfectionist tendencies. Now I have to differentiate between adaptive and maladaptive perfectionism here. Um, adaptive perfectionists are those people who strive for perfection. You know, they try to hone their skills and, you know, to learn um, each day to improve their skills until they achieve perfection. That's absolutely fine. You know, it's, it's just um, uh, coping and, 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 and um, improving your skills day by day to achieve perfection. So that's okay. But when I talk about maladaptive perfectionism, you know, this is the, the type of perfectionism that um, a lot of people with imposter syndrome experience. It's, it's that kind of perfectionism where nothing ever seemed good enough. Mm -hmm. So even if you have achieved like huge success, you still wouldn't think that it's good enough. Maybe you've had an interview, um, for example, with someone and, you know, you, you stumble uh, in the way, but you've actually got your message across but you listen back to it and you, you notice all these little gaps uh, in the interview or you're thinking, oh, you know, it's, it's not good enough when actually it, it's, it's fantastic, you know. Mm -hmm. um, maladaptive perfectionists tend to focus on flaws. They tend to focus on things that didn't go well rather than appreciating what went well and, um, and magnifying that and, and cultivating that so they can get better and better in the future. Instead of celebrating what they've accomplished, they beat themselves down for the little, little things, the little mistakes that they've made. 
So instead of um, trying to refine um, their mistakes, you know, sometimes we make mistakes, instead of trying to improve on that, they would beat themselves up and they would feel as if they are a failure because they make mistakes sometimes. So that's maladaptive perfectionism. And this is something that um, we, need to, we need to recognize that, okay, striving for perfection is okay. You know, you take it day by day and, and refine your craft, you know, improve your skills. But yes, sometimes we can make mistakes and that's okay as long as we're able to learn and grow from our experience. Right. How do one reverse that mindset, the maladaptive mindset? Uh, sorry, what? How do someone reverse that mindset? Ah, how do you reverse that mindset? Yes, as you know, in psychology, we have this difference between having a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So for those um, listeners who might be experiencing uh, maladaptive perfectionism, they tend to have this fixed mindset that everything um, is fixed. So for example, you would say, ah, oh, you know, I'm just bad with numbers. You know, I can't do mathematics. I see numbers. I, I, I can't handle it. Well, actually, you might not be good at mathematics now. You might not be good with numbers now, but it is something that can be improved. So instead of seeing um, traits as fixed um, characteristics that you're not good at this and that's it, you need to adapt a growth mindset thinking that, okay, you might not be good at this yet, but you still have room for growth. You know, that's how you overcome these maladaptive perfectionist tendencies. If you have a growth mindset, it's recognizing that you are not perfect now and there are areas for improvement, but that's okay because you can actually do certain things that could remedy these gaps. So it allows you to grow and, in, and to flourish because you are noticing that there are things that you can still improve. If you are already perfect and um, if you, you are not making mistakes anymore, then there's no room for growth anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's being able to recognize that, yes, we, are, we have flaws and imperfections, but that's okay because there's room for growth and there are certain things, still things, that we can still do to improve ourselves. Right. And I also think that we have to understand that we're not the only one that feels that way. We're mm -hmm. not the only one that is going through it. And we don't have to be perfect because I do believe that a lot of times we tend to look at other people and that's when we begin to judge ourselves based on their success, their wins. Absolutely. And we have to look at it because the same conversation with the client I said, let's not measure your success against those people's success because they're, they have been doing this. They have been doing this for plenty of years. You just started. So of course their results and your results won't be the same based on where you are right now. So I think that when we understand that even some people that they look like they have arrived, right? Mm -hmm. That they feel that way sometimes. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely right. You know, I've been having these conversations with, with my clients myself. Um, they would compare themselves with, with other people who seem like more successful than they are, but they fail to recognize that these people who are far more successful than them have been doing it for like 20 years wow. or you know they've been doing it for a long time when they've actually just had like six months <laughs> in the job. You know what I mean? Yes. So it, it's, yes. not, it's not a good comparison. And, and I also say, you know, I, we, we apply the TLC technique again. Okay, is it true that they are better than you? Yes, <laughs> it is true. You see the figures? Yes, it is true that they are better than you. You ask, is it logical? Just because they are better than you, it doesn't mean that you are bad. It just yeah. means that you are in a different stage in your career mm -hmm. or in your business or in your journey compared to them. So it's not the same measure, right? It's illogical to compare these two. So that's the second question, right? Uh, is it logical? The third question is, is it constructive? How does comparing yourself to them um, help you in any way? Is there anything that you can learn from them? Is there anything that you can learn from their experience? Do they have good practice that you can learn from 
to benefit you. So instead of feeling bad about yourself, that there are people who are achieving um, huge success, you know, they, you know, you look up to them and, and you feel sorry for yourself. Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, celebrate the people who are actually successful and see what you can learn from them rather than feel jealous um, about them. Because there you can see what is possible and you can learn from their success and how you can benefit from that. Right. And you said something, you said it, you said something just now when you said over 20 years and I thought about it. I said, you know what, that's 20 years of resources that they have. And that's why sometimes they do, they are better. They're better because they have over 20 years and they have a lot of resources that they have to utilize versus someone that just started five years ago three years ago, six months ago, a month ago. So we have to, one, I think we have to stop comparing ourselves to other people and that alone will get us on the right path for us to deal with this imposter mindset, this imposter syndrome. What do you think? Yes, yes, absolutely. And yes, it, it's, it's, it's okay to actually see um, these people, you know, what, um, what they are achieving. But instead of comparing yourself to them, you don't have to compare yourself to them because there's no comparison. You know, it's, you know, they're in a different stage. What you can do is you can actually learn from their success, you know, what, what, um, what have they been doing that works and what, what can you learn from their experience to also benefit you? That, that's what I would say. Always ask, how can I make this constructive? What can I learn? What can I gain? Instead of feeling sorry for yourself, is there anything that you can learn from other people's successes that could benefit you? That's, that's, um, I think that's a more constructive and productive way um, to, to look into this. And I do agree with you 100% about that. Now, do you because you cannot, you cannot avoid this, right? You know, in social media, you see this all the time, how successful people, you cannot avoid it. But instead of feeling jealous, instead of feeling bad about yourself, you know, because you're comparing yourself to them, don't compare yourself. Just learn from them and, and celebrate, celebrate their success. You can see what is possible. You're just at a different stage, but you can see... Um, you know, what is possible, you know, when you, when you gain more experience and when you keep striving and when you keep, um, uh, you know, when you continue with your journey. Right. That's absolutely true. And the thing about it that we have to understand is nobody posts their losses on social media. <laughs> I think that's, we should have a campaign on that. You know, I think there was, um, there was an article in psychology, in a psychology journal, um, last year or two years ago it's actually a um a professor who posted his cv of failure right so because because it's actually to show people that okay i'm uh, you know i'm a world acclaimed professor but look at all the things that i, I failed at right. <laughs> before i got there it's be quite empowering and I guess you know this is something that that we can also do on social media you know if we also share our our fails right. <laughs> it's just more human um to be perfectly honest with you I, you know it, we'll see you know if, if this will be a, a trend at some point but yeah I've seen I have seen some people who tried that and um it makes them more human and and you could you could actually relate to them more because you can see that even if they have failed at some point, they still continue and they still persist. And, you know, and that's something that, that we can learn. But yes, you are right. There are um, so many other influencers who Photoshop their lives. <laughs> you know, they, own, they don't only Photoshop their photos, but they also Photoshop their success. They yes. Photoshop their lives, like they're living this um, perfect um, life. But, you know, we, we need to share our vulnerabilities as well sometimes, some of our fails. Not necessarily moan on social media all the time, but also to share um, that we are all human, that sometimes we have our vulnerable moments, sometimes we fail. But the important thing is, yes, sometimes we fail, sometimes we make mistakes, but we get up um, when we're ready, you know, because sometimes it does take a bit of time to to find the energy and motivation to get up once again. But when we're ready, we get up and, and we continue moving forward. Right. That is so true. We absolutely just have to keep moving. Just keep it pushing. 
just keep it pushing. Stay focused and keep it pushing. Do you and have yes, to? go ahead. And, and one of the things that I, I would like to um, share as well, because yes, we, we have this message, you know, to keep pushing and, and to keep moving forward. But yeah, we, we also have to acknowledge that, yeah, sometimes it might be difficult <laughs> to keep pushing. Um, for one individual, sometimes you've fallen so many times uh, um, before that when you fall again, it might be difficult to get up. Which is why I would say it's really important that you surround yourself with supportive people. Um, that's actually the essence of, of my company. You know, I, it, it's called the PAMI code. Um, PAMI is a word that means um, let's go together um, in Greek. Um, and it basically means that um, in your journey in this life, we can go together. Because yes, sometimes we fall and sometimes other people will fall. And we have to be there um, to support each other when that happens because yes sometimes we will fall and we'll pick ourselves up but there are times when the fall is so bad that it is quite difficult to get up so it's important to have that support to surround yourself with people who are compassionate and to show the same amount of compassion and support to others who may be experiencing the same thing that's true that is so true. And I do love the unique name of your business, by the way. <laughs> when I said, I was like, wow, what does that mean? But I do, <laughs> I do love the uniqueness of your business. Like you said. It's, it's yeah, it is, it is a Greek. Like my, my husband is Greek, by the way. <laughs> so he always says, Pame, Pame, because I'm, you know, he, he always drags me, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. But it, uh, yeah, it just means let's go together. But I also borrowed the letters of Pame. Um, to refer to purpose, action, momentum, and energy. And basically, again, it's a reminder that in our life, um, we always have to remind ourselves um, of our purpose, ground ourselves in the why of things, you know, um, always know why we are doing what we are doing. But at the same time, couple that with action, because if all you have is um, your, your intentions, then all you have would be thoughts. You know, I intend to do this. I intend to do that. You have to couple it with action. And when I say action, that would be consistent action. So you maintain the momentum, but also you need to sustain the energy. You know, keep the positive energy up. Um, have that, you know, um, experience. Um, you have to practice gratitude, compassion, you know, feel joy. All of these positive things so you don't burn yourself out in the process. So it's about having purpose, action, momentum, and energy. And that will, will help you to drive your, your success forward. Yes, I do agree. And that's the, I mean, I am so excited and fired up about our conversation because as I'm listening to you, I'm just examining myself. And I thought about it. I said, you know what? Anytime imposter syndrome set in, that's when we limit ourselves. That's when we stop growing our business. We stop um, collaborating with other people. And that's kind of when we start walking alone. So I love your let's go together. Yes, yes. You know, you can share your journeys. And for people who experience imposter syndrome, they tend to, yes, they tend to, to travel alone. When I mean travel, I mean the, the, their life. You know, if they have burdens, if they have problems, they, they try to, to hide it. They try to solve it on their own because they fear that if they tell others about it, if they ask for help, it's a sign of weakness. And it is, uh, you know, they, they fear that they will be exposed <laughs> as frauds um, if, they, if they try to ask for help. But actually asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of humility that, you know, there are certain things that you're good at and there are certain things that you need help with. And when you need help, ask for help. You know, reach out for support. Um, and if someone else also asks for your help, you know, see what, what you can do to support them as well. So it's, you know, it's a give and take relationship. But in this journey, we can actually go together. And if you are experiencing imposter syndrome, thinking that, ah, uh, you know, I cannot admit that, um, that I cannot do this on my own. I cannot admit that I need help. Probably you do need help and you're in denial. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's just going to make things uh, harder for you. So if you're, if you're listening to this and, and if you can relate to that, if you're someone who's not seeking help, 
because you are afraid that people are going to judge you and you are afraid that um, you will be exposed as a fraud for asking for help, try to remember that you are human and there are certain things that you're good at and there are certain things that you might need help with. And just acknowledge that and, and, and trust that um, there will be people who, help, who will help you if you just ask for it. You need to ask for it. Awesome. Any final thoughts before we go, Doc? Any final thoughts? Well, for, for those listeners who are um, experiencing imposter syndrome, don't worry. You're not the only one who experiences this. About 70% of us will experience imposter syndrome at some point in our lives. And in my book, I actually call it imposter syndrome remedy rather than imposter syndrome cure because self-doubt, you know, this feeling of incompetence, you know, this feeling that you're not good enough will always be there. Whenever you have a new project or whenever you have something that's new that you haven't done before, you will always stop and think, oh, you know, I'm not sure if I can do this or, you know, I'm not sure if I'm not good enough. That's okay. We all feel this way. But the important thing is when you feel this way, that you know how to manage it, that you know how you're going to handle it, you know, to assess um, your abilities, to assess the risk to assess the consequences of your action or inaction and make an informed decision on what you need to do next. Don't get stuck in the thought that you're not good enough or you know, the thought that you are a failure. Don't get stuck in your head. Try to move forward. Use the TLC questioning uh, technique as I've shared with you today and, and use that so you can flourish with confidence at work and in life. Thank you so much, Doc. Guys, I am super excited to have her on with us. We had an amazing conversation. And I know that your life is changing as we know it, as we begin to implement these, trage these tragedies and resources that we discussed today. Thank you guys so much for joining Let's Talk to You podcast. And we'll catch you on your timeline. Bye, guys. Awesome.